All right. Let us see the final project we are going to actually, you know, create. So here is the final, you know, our uh, output. So we have this raw data right here. So we need to actually get this raw data cleaned. And the best way to do that is for we to use Power Query. What we did was to push the raw data inside Power Query and add some steps and actually, you know, transform it to what can actually tell the kind of story we wanted to tell. So if this is your first time using Power Query, do not worry. It's something very simple and easy. We are going to learn it together. Once you are done, you can just close and load it. So this is not really huge data. We're able to load this back to our workbook. And here is the transform data. So going back to the dashboard here, we have actually used a lot of tricks to make sure we tell the right story with the data we have and actually keep the color consistent. I'm gonna show you how everything works and the animation, everything, and the icons we have right here for male and female gender. I'm gonna show you how we did everything. So all you have to do right now is just stay tuned and see how we can actually create this particular attrition dashboard from the scratch. All right, here is our data, I mean our raw data. So it's not actually clean and we can't use this to actually answer the question or create a story we want to create. So we have to make some transformation and make sure our data look just like what we have right here, right now. So this is what it is. So I'm gonna have a data like this. So we actually transform the raw data from here and we have this and after that we made analysis and actually got our dashboard created. That is the same step we're going to follow to actually have our own dashboard created from the scratch. All right, the first thing you do is just to make sure your data is actually, you know, in the normal Excel format table format. So what am I talking about? So you're going to convert this into a table. You with Ctrl T, you have that done. In case you're going to forget this shortcut, Ctrl T, let me take you to the ribbon and show you how it works. So if you can see my ribbon is not really active right now. The reason being was because I don't really like it like that. At the default, this is what you have when you install Microsoft Excel and you open it for the first time. So I always love to actually come to this particular part here and use the auto hide ribbon. So once I click on it, I have something like this. So now before you start to convert this into a table, you wanna make sure that you have no break of space like this. I'm gonna say insert. So if we have something like this and we do control T, what happens is this, it's gonna actually ignore this. I'm gonna cancel. And if we do control T right here, what happens is it's going to take just that particular, you know, column alone and it wouldn't actually go to where it should actually cover. So it cannot cover up to here. So what do we do? We should always check if we have any, you know, any, um, any column or any rows that is actually empty all through the whole column. So that has been, you know, um, well, explained the next thing we're going to do right now is to go to the top ribbon once you click on it you're going to have this so to change your data into a table you click on insert and you can see where you have this particular table writing once you hover over it what you see is create table with ctrl t so if i just click on it right now the same thing i have when i actually click on my ctrl t is what i have right here and i click on ok so right now we are actually cool with this. So if you don't like to see the filter you have right here, you have that particular decision to be made. So you can go to what, go to data, and from data you clear the filter and the filter is gone. But that doesn't mean this is not an official table. So definitely if this is an official table. So the next thing you do is just to get this data into Power Query where we can actually have some transformation made to those particular, you know, group of numbers we have right here to turn them into much more readable information. If you have not used Power Query before and this is your first time, just stay tuned because we're going to actually learn a lot of things about how to use Power Query to make transformation and even to add column and clean data. So clicking at the top right here, you make sure you go to where it says get and transform the uh, transform. 
and on that data is where it is in case you're on home just come straight to data click on it and you'll see those group of you know get and transform data so for the first time let me introduce you to new query right here on the new query you have file uh, from file and those are the different files we have we have from workbook from csv you know our uh, xml text file and even folder and we have the databases and those are the databases available that we can actually connect to straight up and we have other services like web from all the all data feed and odbc and even creating blank query which we're going to create uh, in this course as well to show you how blank query works and how you can actually use blank query and the next one is combined query like merge query and append query so they are very important you should actually learn all about this so stay tuned and let's see how we can learn our majority of this together the first we're going to do right now is to pick our data from this particular table so already our data is visible to us we can see our data one-on-one -on, -one on a particular worksheet so to pick it up into parker right now what we're going to do is to use the from table here so click on it and what happens is it's gonna pick it up and actually have it in power query for you all right if this is your first time coming to power query welcome to power query environment where we can actually have data transformed clean shape and actually turn it to what we can use to tell stories so the first thing we do when we get here is to rename our table because it's telling us table tree and that is not what we want so i'm going to come to this particular part right here where we can actually have it named Let's say want to use hr underscore transformed underscore data. So now here it would have it. So always make sure you have this particular underscore. Don't use paste when you want to name a table. It's something very, very important. So I'm going to just make sure I commit that. And already you have it on this particular query part here. So if you don't want to see this query, you can always collapse it. So it's actually hidden and stuff like that. So what do we do to this? The first thing we do when we actually, you know, import our data in Power Query is to make sure we check for the data type. So it's very, very important. How do you check the data type? So what you do is to make sure you come right here where you have A, B, and C. Once you click on it, those are different data types available. So we have decimal, currency, whole number, percentage, date and time, date, time, date, time, time zone, duration, text, true and false, you know, binary and using local, whatever here. So now the one we're actually currently on now is a text. And if we go to where we have text, it's actually giving us A, B, and C. And if we have like a whole number, it's going to give us one, two, three. Let us try that and see. I am going to navigate towards this area and now you have one, two, three. That, is, that means it's actually a whole number. So another thing I want to show you now is this particular applied helps right here. So this particular place can make you to some kind of time travel to go back to what you had actually, you know, done before and make changes to it. Let's see how that works. Oh, now this is actually change type, right? Let's say we come right here and uh, what we have is actually, you know, work life balance. And I felt like this is not an actual, you know, uh, kind of data type I want. I want to make changes to it. So once I actually come right here and uh, make sure I go to say I want to turn this one into a percentage, for example, though it's wrong. I just want to show you an example of what I'm talking about. So once I click on percentage, what happens? It prompt up this up change column type so now it's asking you if you want to replace this particular step right here here is a step change type is a step or you want to create new one i'm going to say yes i want to create new one because what i want to do right now is totally wrong i'm going to click on okay and what happens is giving us 100 percent 300 percent which is absolutely wrong that is not what we should have but i just did this to make sure i show you how to change your data type and not just that and as well how you can actually add more of this let's say what we've done is correct so the next thing we can do is to come right here and see how we can actually rename this by double clicking or by right clicking you can see where it says um rename so you can click on rename so we just say percentage whatever you want to name it you can just name it and that is actually all that you need so whoever comes right now will be able to track and see what happens right here is changing of percentage whatsoever but we don't need it 
I told you we can time travel, so you can decide to remove this by just clicking on this particular cross right here. You know, if it were in normal Excel, you know, worksheet, what you do, you do Ctrl Z and it's gone. But right now we have to just make sure we close it. And that is all we need to do. So can you see it right here? So first of all, we just brought our data into Power Query. And the next thing we actually try to see what are data types and how many of them we have available by clicking on this particular part right here. And we're able to see all this. And what we need to do before we can decide to just choose which one we should use is to know what data type we have sitting on a particular column. And the next thing I wanna show you in case you don't look, uh, it doesn't look familiar, you don't really know what your data types are. All you can do is to control it or highlight the whole table. And you go to where we call transform. On the transform, you're gonna see where they say detect data type right here. Once you click on it, it's gonna walk on all through your columns and find and give it the suitable data type. You understand? But it is always good when you actually do it manually yourself to be sure of what you've done because sometimes you know Power Query can just mess things up and it won't give you what you want. So what about this, ladies and gentlemen? That is nice and this is all you have to know in this particular part of the Alright, if you look at the data we have right here right now, so it has a lot of columns, but what if we don't want to use this whole column to analyze data, what do we do? Should we keep them? I guess not really important. So I'm going to show you a particular part they call, you know, choose column. So here we have choose columns and here we have go to columns. Because we have a lot of columns right here in case you want to go to, let's say you are here, you are here and you're looking for business travel, you start searching through to know what business travel is because you have to scroll all the way through. So what do you do to avoid all this? That is where this particular manage columns comes in. So go to this part here and go to column. So once you actually have that open, here you can see business travel. So you don't have to even guess where it should be. So once you click on it, it highlights the particular part for you automatically. So if you come here and go to column here, and you want to go to this particular, you know, environment uh, satisfaction, you can just click on OK here, and it takes you up to this particular part. That is one aspect I want to show you. The next one is go to this particular part again. So now this time around, we're going to use choose columns once you click on it. So let's see what it gives us. So something different. This one is with a checkbox. So this is where you can actually decide to choose which column you want to have gone. You don't want to use that column and you're not going to use that column. You can from here delete it. Okay, let's say this particular H, H, uh, CF8 band right now. If I want to get it, if I click and click on OK right now to be gone. But before I do that, let me show you what it is and why we're not going to use it. So here they actually help us to group the age and I'm not very much satiated with how the age is being grouped. So I want to have my own age grouped, you know, differently from this. So in that case, because I'm going to have my own age uh, grouped in different buckets, I don't really need to keep this. So we have different options to have this gone. You can either just hit on the delete key on your keyboard or you can right click and say remove rows. And uh, in case you want to remove something multiple, and you want to remove this CF8 bond and as well CF attrition label right here. So you can actually use this as well to do that by going here. You can see where you have those two. You just uncheck it. And once you click on OK, what happens? They are gone. They are not what there. And it actually says remove other columns right here. Do you get this right? So this is how you can actually remove column. What if you want to get them back? So by clicking on this particular part right now, what happened? Do you really have them back? So I guess you do have them back. And this is exactly what it is right here. And if we go all the way back here and click on this right now, it's going to be unchecked. That is one way to actually get columns off. Or the next thing you can do is to actually select both of them. But a little key on your keyboard won't do the same work for you. Okay, this tab number right here, if you don't need it, you can get it off, but this tab number is very important. So we can actually use this tab number to create something, you know, amazing. So we're gonna actually let it be there. So we scroll through and say, okay, employee number here. We don't need it. We just go ahead and say remove and we take it off. So I'm just showing you how to get things off. It's not really, you know, 100% important that you must get them off, but you can actually always do that. 
and that is actually gold. This is what you need to know. So before we start making our transformation, let's see how we are going to actually you know, get this data back to Excel worksheet. So to get it to Excel worksheet, in case you are on either of those particular, you know, or tab here on the, the top ribbon. So all you can do is to click on home and it's going to give you this particular part where it says close and load. So once you click on it, what you have right here, you have close and load and you have close and load too. So when you say close and load, what happens? It's going to actually automatically load this into an Excel worksheet in this particular workbook. What if you say close and load to? So it's going to make uh, it's going to ask you two questions. Do you want to load this inside a worksheet or you want to actually make sure it goes into another memory called a power pivot? Hmm, whatever. Let us actually try to use this one and see close and load. And what it does right now is trying to load the whole data in a new worksheet. And as you can see, it has a new worksheet entered for us right here and now we have hr transform data here so once we hover over it we can actually come back here and go to edit and we'll go back to park here again to have it edited so right now i'm going to actually say transform data so if i actually have this closed so let's say by mistake being a first being into first time you just have it closed and you want to go back what do you do you go back to this particular top level right here and you go to data and from data you're going to see where it says show queries so once you click on show queries you find this again and you can actually hover over it and come right here and click on edit or if you don't want the table you can always delete it from power query by clicking on this particular delete right here or you can right click and see more information on what it is like refresh rename yeah, delete edit and if i click on edit what happens it takes me back to power query so closing gets me back right here okay for the other option we've not used i'm gonna go and edit again for this very option we've not used do not worry we're gonna see how to use this and what we need this for and why we should use it and why it is different than the one we have just used right now i just want to break everything down in pieces for you to understand what it is and this is going to be a bonus to you specifically if you have not used power bi before once you get to power bi it will not be something new to you again to be very simple and easy because already we've walked through most of the things you need to know in power query right here in microsoft Okay, now let's go back to Power Query. So under Power Query, this is where we start our proper transformation. So the first thing we do is to scroll to this end, or we can actually use this particular, you know, you know, or go to column. And where we want to go right now is performance. Is performance. So we're gonna to go to where we have performance rating. I'm gonna click on that, and now it takes me here. So I'm going to open this performance performance rating right here and see what we have. So we have three and we have four. So you need to ask the business or you know the company your borrows your clients what does three stands for and what does four stands for. And in this case, three stands for high performance and four stands for low performance. So how do you do this? So you want to make sure it makes a lot of sense, right? So I'm going to come here right now. So I will just go to where it says add column. So under add column, we're going to go to this particular conditional column right here. So we're about to add a new column to our table. So I'm going to click on it. And that gives us this. So we're going to type here the name of the column we're going to, we're about to create. So that is going to be performance, performance status here. So under this particular part, when you click on it, what you have is all the columns available in your table, in your HR table. So and you look at where you have performance written here and you pick it. So there are different operators to evaluate what you really want. So if I open it up right now, you see equal does not equal greater than. So and all of that down to is less than or equal to right here. So what we want to use right now is this one that says equals. So if it is equal to three, that means it's actually going to be high rating. So we're going to just type high right here. And if the rating is actually not three, so else we just need to 
give us low. So I'm gonna put low right here. So which means if it checks and this three is not actually the case, or we have four or something beyond four, it's gonna give us low. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. So here, this particular part here, what it does is this. Uh, you can actually use this to move down or move up specifically when you create lots of this right here. So we're going to create lots of this, then we'll particularize what I've just said right now. So the next thing you do is to click on OK, and that adds up this for you. Quickly, what you need to do is for you to give it the right data type. So I'm going to come here and choose this particular text here. So it gives us the right data type. So the next one we're going to do right now is the one that we have right here called H bucket. So going to H bucket here, if I just scroll to this end, so you can see how I'm struggling to see where my H is up. About. So you can just go to that particular part, which is this particular part here, and just go to column and we'll go to H column. So first of all, what we need to understand before we start to create this is for we to see where, what is the start no, the lowest number and what is the highest number. So we can see the lowest number is 18 and the highest number here is actually 60. So we want to create this with the interval of, or we just want to create this with, this with the interval of 10. So let's see how that can be done. So the same thing we've done previously is what we're going to do. Go to add column, go to conditional column here. And from there, we're going to actually have to type in here age bucket. So age bucket. So we come here and go to that particular age. So this time around, we're not, we're not going to use equals. So we're going to say if it is less than or equal to, if this particular age is less than or equal to, you know, 25, here so we're going to say this category of employees is actually you know 18 to 25. you get it so we now add on that clause and come right here and we choose the same age so we're going to still use the same if it is less than this time around we're going to use 35. i told you interval of 10 so it's going to be 35 right here and we come right here, uh, it's gonna be 26. I'm gonna explain this to you. 26 to what? To 35. So let me show you what is going on right here. So this one here now, is gonna start from 18 and stop at 25. So once it stops at 25, the next one is gonna start from 26 and stop at 35. And we still have more because I said we have up to 60 the minimum is 18 and the max number is 60 and we need to evaluate another one again so we choose the same age and we come here and just make sure we use this less than or equal to and this time around is going to be 45 so and here remember we stop at 35 so now it's going to be 36 to 45 36 to 45 so you get that so we need to actually add again. And this time around, we're gonna go to the same age. We choose the same operator. And now here is gonna be uh, 55. So people under the age of 55, is gonna be 46 to 55, 46 to 55. So now we are almost done from here. So whatever is not actually in those particular categories right here, so it's going to fall under this particular else and it will be 56, 56 plus. So 56 plus, I'm going to use this particular plus right here. So in case you don't have, you know, this intelligence I have right on my own right now. So you can always use the normal plus like this. So either of it will definitely work for you. So can you see what I've just gotten? So I told you about something like this here. That you can move this up so once you've done that can you see now it has gone up so you can move it down again and you can actually you not know, delete using this particular part right here to delete and you have this output right here 
So do you want to actually select something from under column to be used here? There are some situations when you have to do something like that. So you would definitely do. But in this situation, we don't have to. This is what we have to do. And we have just done just that. So I'm going to click on OK right here. Let's see what happens. So it gives us this. And we have to quickly turn this into a text because it's not more numbers even though if what is sitting in the column is number remember we have a delimiter of dash so which means it's not more a number even though if we decide to turn this into a whole number right now there is no way it can be evaluated into a whole number it's going to give us an error so for that we're going to leave it this way with just a text and that is all we have to do okay text for example you know something happened along the line and you feel like you want to make an adjustment what do you do you can see this particular gi icon we have right here so once you click on it, it's going to take you back to this particular conditional column we've just inserted and you can make any changes to whatever you want to make any changes to right here and come back and click on ok and that is all you have to do so we still have this one if she said the job satisfaction so let us go to job satisfaction and see what we have right there i want to go to job satisfaction so it will be very easy for me to navigate through job satisfaction here and just the column so here we go on that job satisfaction we have i'm going to load more so we have the minimum to be one and the maximum to be you know all four so i told you you have to speak to the owner of the data your clients your browser whoever owns the data if it's a data you can make your decision to see how you want to transform those numbers you have right here so the first thing i'm going to do right now is to make sure i turn this particular one into very satisfied satisfied dissatisfied and um, the last one is very dissatisfied i guess you know what it is I'm that i'm talking about so i'm going to just cancel and go to add column this time around conditional column so the reason why i'm having insert step right now is because we are on the previous one just take it off and click on the last one for you to make a continuation of a new step beneath this one so go to condition now column so now that is done for you without any other question so job satisfaction status That is it. So now we come here and actually go to the column called job satisfaction. Here it is. And now we're going to say, we're going to use the equal to. So if it is equal to one right now, so it's going to be very satisfied. So now if it is equal to two, so go ahead and choose the same column job satisfaction equals to two so it's gonna be satisfied just satisfied so if it is equal to three right now so you select the column don't always forget this is very very important so if it is equal to three it is gonna be dissatisfied So if it's four, so you don't have to actually specify the fourth one. So else is going to be very dissatisfied. So make sure you check your spellings. So very dissatisfied, that is it. So very dissatisfied. So check your spellings, make sure it's correct. And all we do now is just to click on OK. And we've just added another one. So always make sure you do this by clicking on text. And that is okay. So we still have, you know, uh, two more of it. And the next one is going to be distance status. So let us just go to that column called distance and see what is going on right on that particular column. So we're going to go right here and go to column. And now we look for distance among those ones here. We check distance to work. So here we have it. We have distance from home, which means distance from home to work. So I'm going to click on OK. It takes us down to the column. So what we have right here is um, 
we have I'm gonna load more. So we have the minimum to be one and it stopped at 29. So we are going to categorize this into nearby, far, and very far. And how do we do that? Let's see. So I told you to speak to the now of the data to see how this could be categorized. So anybody that stay that fall under one to ten, I want to make sure they are people who are very nearby to the workplace. Okay, aside that right now, from 11, that is if 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 nobody falls between, so it's gonna be from 11 now to 20. Those people are going to be far from the organization or from the workplace. And anybody that doesn't fall under those two categories will be very far from the workplace. So now we've just, you know, said what we want. How do we put this in action? So it's for me to go to add column and conditional column right now. So once we just click on conditional column, the next thing we do is just to change this one to distance status. So distance status, and what we do is just to go to distance from home to work. So now it's going to be equals to what? If it is equal to 10, so we use less than or equal to. So if it is less than or equal to 10, so 10 here. So we want to actually categorize those people to live very near, nearby the workplace and we add on that clause and uh, we choose the same distance again we go gradually so we have this distance from home to work is less than or equal to 20 now so 20 so it's gonna be far and uh, whatever doesn't fall under this range here so it's gonna be very very far and that is all we need to do we close this and here we go we have this so we can always just make sure we change this to the right data format and then we come here and open this place up to see so we have far very uh, nearby and very far and that is okay so this is filter we added when we close that and uh, the next one is going to be, this is the last one we're going to add, which is working year. Do we have attrition because of, you know, this working year of a thing? So we are going to go into this particular part here. So we don't have to go to the column again. So already I've shown you why I'm creating this and you have known or have you've gotten to know the knowledge already how the how to handle such uh, numbers so right here i'm going to say working year group so working year group so we just want to go here into the working year so we want to group the people that are working on our organization together so we just go to working year total work year here is it total work here and it's gonna be where it is less than or equal to now people who have spent from the current year is gonna evaluate to zero from zero to ten years so those people are gonna be uh, people from between we're gonna just categorize them between so use WT or BWT or BTW as between so you give a space and say from zero to what? To 10. So those are people that actually started to work between now and 10 years, between 10 years ago up till now. And we add on that clause again, and we just go ahead and pick the same thing. So we pick the same total working year, and we're gonna say where it is less than or equal to this time around, we're gonna use 20 for it. So we're gonna use 20. So that 20 now is gonna be BTW and uh, it's gonna be from 11 to 20. And the next one is gonna be uh, choosing the same column again. That is gonna be total work years in the organization. So we wanna see the attrition on that level. And what we're gonna do right now is gonna be uh, this one is going to be people that had spent from 21 to 30. So it's going to be 
or btw so you give a space so it's gonna be 21 so to 30 and whoever is not in this category so it's gonna be people that have spent over 30 years with us that is gonna be 30 years plus so we just want to go ahead and use this plus so remember if you use this particular plus here it's not going to appear so don't use that so you can use normal plus in case you want to do that so i don't want to give space i just want to make sure it's very closed so this is all we need to do for this particular transformation so i can go ahead and click on ok right now and that is all we have to do so coming here i can go to text and I will just make sure I convert this into a text. So remember, we spent a lot of time right here. It's very, very important. So this is all we need to do when we talk about the transformation of a thing. And we are just done with this transformation. We are about to add this into the Excel worksheet. So go to home and just click on this right now. And uh, look at what happens. It's loading something new to, into this. Oh, goodness. Okay. That's, so once we just okay we have to step up from here and then uh, we go here so we see everything we've just added those are the new columns we've added and those columns are not actually present in this particular data source we have right here so this one is very important you have to keep it you don't have to delete it whatever changes you make to this particular uh, part of the data would reflect onto this when you refresh the um the query from here so right now i'm gonna go to edit and now whatever you do to that particular data would reflect onto this when you come right here go to home and you see where it says refresh data so here is your refresh data you can refresh preview you can refresh all specifically when you have different types of tables right here so i hope you get that so just make sure you keep your source data in this particular you know sheet right here do not truncate it is very very important so now this is all you need to do to make a transformation and from here we are going straight up to analysis so now we are going to create a new worksheet called analysis and we create another one called dashboard. All right, in the previous video, we have just added this particular, you know, analysis sheet and this particular, you know, our dashboard sheet. So let us see what we can do to a dashboard sheet. I told you, as default, we always have this view. So when you first of all install, you know, Microsoft Excel package. Oh, because we're going to be creating dashboard now, we're going to make sure we have this view and it has been part of me. I always love to have this view always. I'm not really okay with this. This space is not much for me. To maintain my canvas now, what I do is just to go to the top level right here, go to view, and here we have different way to play around with. So I'm gonna take off the grid line and it looks very blank. Now I'm gonna take off the headings. So those numbers are gone. So this is what I have. So the next thing I do now is just to make sure I control A to highlight everything. And I want to change the color to this. Go to home, click right here. I'm gonna to go to the third one here where we have white background with dark 25%. So we have something like this, nicely done. So the next thing is for you to click right here and go to insert. So from there, you see where we have, you know, illustrations, click on it and you see the shapes. And we're gonna go with this particular, you know, rectangle rounded corners and uh, we just get it. So I'm gonna make sure it start from here. I would have to expand it. So the rounded corner is something I have to work on. I'm just gonna make sure it's not that round. So this time around, I'm a bit saturated with this. It can just make sure I create a space for it and just make sure it closes this way. And now if I'm not really sure of, you know, if this is centralized or whatsoever, it could be like this, right? So there is nothing you can do about it. So what you can do is for you to make sure you use your eye to, you know, cut it and see if this is in the middle of this because this other color 
for the background I need it to appear. So the next thing I do is to control one and I have this line. I'm going to just say no line to it because I don't want to have border around it. Then I go to this particular part here, click on this and I pick this particular color with 5% darker white. And this is what we have as, a, as the end result. Can you see this? It gives us something like this. So if you want more space in between, you can just decrease it and have something like this. So you can always make your adjustment, you know, spend a lot of time, you know, on your dashboard. So this is what you have. So make sure you always save your work to avoid any, you know, shutdown, unnecessarily shutdown, you know, when you work on your dashboard. So this is what we have to do for the first time. So we've just maintained the dashboard area and the data area here is ready. So Right, on this part, what I do for the first time is just to make sure I keep, you know, two part of the top, you know, just empty. And I want to come right here and do just uh, one here, so I have space around it. So what I'll do for the first time is just to make sure I clear this particular, you know, filter aspect of it right here. So what I'll do is just for me to go to my data. And when I, once I click on this, I have something as plain as this. So the next thing I do is just to click on this particular part and just make sure I open this place up a little bit so it affects everything I have, right? So if you're not satiated, just a little bit, add it up. That is nice, you deselect it. So for the header, I want the header to be wider than what we have right here. So I'm going to actually click here again to have everything highlighted. I'll go to the top left right here. So go to my home and just make sure I match everything rightly. This is what it is that I want to have. So this is actually, you know, optional. It's just to make the part here to be some kind of fancy. And the next thing I do again is just to make sure I highlight everything. And this time around, I want to have the color changed. So let us go to the top here. And from there we go here. So we don't have the color we want from here. I'm going to go to more colors and I'm going to click on custom. And from custom, I'm going to clear this off and we're going to use something like this. So you can see if you don't have the hex code on the version of Excel you're using, you can type this red, green and blue right in. So it's going to give you this color. I'm going to click on OK. And that gives me something like this. So what about this particular grid line we have right on it? So it is time for me to change this. I'm going to go to the top here. So go to my table. I'm going to click right here. I will just give it none. And there is nothing on it again. So I've used something like this. I told you it's optional. If you want to just maintain your table to look a little bit catchy to your boss, it's OK. So next again, what I'll do, once I actually come right here, you see my arrow pointing to the right hand corner. I click on it. What I have is this. It's going to actually highlight just the table for me and stop right here. So I'm going to do Ctrl B to make it bolder. And I'm going to come to the top left right here. Go to home and select this particular white. And that will make sure it's a little bit stand out. Can you see it right now? So one more thing I'm going to do right now is to highlight it and go right to this particular part here and make sure I say bottom border. So I want to use this particular right up now. We are looking for the one that has to do with the bottom border. So I can decide to just use this. Let us check it out and see. So this is what we have. So this is actually too dark for me. I don't want to use something as dark as this. So we can go ahead and actually change it. Let us go to custom right here. We go to more border. And once we come to more border here, so what I'm going to do right now is just to make sure I still have this But What I'm going to do is just to use something as this. I'm going to come to select the kind of black I want to use for it. What if I go with this and now I change it. So I click on this and here is a bit, you know, it showed up a bit, but not really clear. So I'm going to go back again to make the adjustment. So we just want to select something dark. So change it. And here we go, it showed up very well. So the next thing I'm going to do right now is just to select this particular part and change the color to this alone. So what I'll do, I go here, 
I go to this particular part here and I go to more. Then I go to this particular part and clear the one we have right here and have another one in. Then you just have to know what it is. So you can just replicate the same thing for it. And once I click on OK, so we have this. And uh, for the color of the text, we just want to use this particular color here for it. And for the next one here, we just have to change this. So we go to the top level again. And we do the same thing, go right here. We just have this one changed. Click on OK. So now we have this. So what I'm going to do now is to select this. Control Shift, right arrow. So we just do Copy. And what I'm going to do next right now is just to come back right here. Uh, I'm going to just make sure I control shift right down and uh, we just have to right click and uh, go to this particular paste pressure and you're going to see where it says format and you click on OK and the format will be placed right here for you. So what we need to do now is just to make sure we change the, I'm gonna go right, this down. So we just go right here and uh, we change the color. So we have exactly the same thing we've actually, you know, how uh, we had on the other one. So I'm gonna just make sure this one is a bold to make sure it stands out a little bit from the rest. And uh, the color is gonna be a bit different. So we go right here and we set this color to be standard. Or oh, it stand out from the rest. So that this is what we've just gotten to have this kind of you know uh, data created. So you can see through it right now what we have right here. So in case you want to have yours like this, so it has the difference from the previous one we've seen. This is what you can do to have your own you know uh, table customized the way you really want it. So not you know really spoil. If you don't want to do it like this, you can leave it the way it is or the way it comes just like this, but it doesn't look good. It looks some kind of weird. Uh, all right, here we are on the data part. So what we can do for the first time is to create a pivot table to help us summarize our data. So quickly, you can go to the top ribbon and uh, from the top ribbon, you click on the insert, you know, then you can see what it says, pivot table. Do not use the recommended pivot table. So just use the one that says pivot table and it's going to pick from this, you know, uh, it has a well formatted uh, range. So you don't have to be scared of like, if it's going to pick everything for sure, it does. So what I'm going to do next now is just to click on OK. But I don't want to do that because already I have a worksheet already for my analysis. I'm going to click here and make sure you have a cursor here. Or you can click this way and go here and paste it where you want to have it right in, like here. So the next thing I'm going to click on OK. So we've just got enough host pivot table created. And what do we need? We need to know how many employees we do have. If we go back to the data table, so you can see every single employees here are very unique. Starting from this tariff number one, it actually goes down to the last number in the row. So no uh, staff is a duplicate here. This star number or this the staff number one will not repeat itself over and over again. This is not a transactional table. This is a table for entering the uh by the term of workers, you know, so it's actually come once. So in that case, coming here to create the total employees right now, you can drag any field at all, any of the uh, table right here, column right here, you can drag department right in. And because it's a department, automatically it defaulted into a count for you to count how many employees we do have in the organization. So it is only when you drag in the value of um, like number numerical value that you start seeing it aggregating for you. So right here it does aggregate. So using sum, but here it's actually on count. If you still want to use this particular one to actually, you know, get to know how many employees you have, all you need to do is just to make a change of it to count. 
and you have the same thing so for that i'm just gonna go with this first one here and i'm just gonna name this one total employees so uh because i don't want to go back to this particular part here to create my pivot table over and over again so i will have to do it you know some formatting to this but i'm going to show you why i'm doing the formatting so let's say i'm going to drag my department right in here right now so what i have here is some grant is the grant total here and that's where i have the row label so i do not have the department here i just want to have my department here so all i need to do to do that formatting is just to go to the top ribbon click on design and come right here first of all go to report layout and use the tabular form now it shows the department so the next thing is to make sure i turn off the grand total both the row and the column level so i'm going to use this and that actually is cool so i don't want to use the department to do this i just want to take it off but if i just go ahead now and copy this i'm going to just copy this i can just shift it to the side here so now what happens here is this no worries i can just go ahead and take my attrition and have it right here so here gives me the numbers of attrition and uh, how many uh, employees we still have available in the organization for you to understand this yes and no so you have to come down to this particular transform data so under this particular one here where you have years means the employee is not more working in the organization it has been like maybe retrenched sucked you know anything could be the case voluntarily gone to an organization to start working and here it's going to be x employees so any years will be x employees so if it is no which means the employee is currently you know working on in organization so we have a supporting column like this to help you understand what this one is so with that under yes which means it's x employee so we can come down to the one we are creating now and uh, we can just name this one to So here is going to be X. So here we go. We can now expand this out. You get it? So this is what you do just to create something like this. Um, I don't want to turn this one into a percentage. So all I can do now is just to actually create a percentage of this. So our percentage and you go down, you use the equal sign here. So use this sum function. Try to actually, you know, okay. Sorry, before then, you have to divide this by total, the grand total of this. So you just divide, and you now use this sum function, and just fill this in. F4 to lock it down, to freeze it, close it, and uh, you hit your enter key. So you copy it down. So if I double click on this right now. It does not move down that is better so the next thing i'm going to do right now is just to know what it is the percentage of the attrition we have and how many employees we have based on percentage so i can just go and that is where so now 17 percent of our you know our workers are gone so we still have 83 percent available in our organization currently so how do we make sense with this the first thing we're going to do right now is to actually create some uh, before we bring up our visuals let us just adjust something right here so i think i'm gonna be cool with something like this so exactly so the next thing is for me to go back to the top level here on the ribbon go to illustrations come here and pick this rounded shape so let's just be on the same page i wanted to use this same you know um, what do I call it? So you're gonna use the same height and same weight with me. So that is gonna be under this particular part here. So what we're gonna use for the, you know, height is 1.51, 1.51. Then now for the weight we're gonna use 9.29. So 9.29. So you quick call this. 
So here it's going to go to the top level right here. So we just want to reduce the coveness a bit. So we just make sure it covers to this end. Beautiful. So we have to go ahead and change the color. So if I just do the change the color like this, I'm going to go right here, go to more color. And I just want to use this particular color, you know, code I have right on my screen, which is this particular H2E2F3C. So you can see the color code on red, green, and blue. So that is what let's use. So if I step off, we have, you know, um, outline. So we just have to remove it. We might not see it now. It's a bit distorting. <coughs> So we take it out. So this is the first thing we need to do. So for the second part of it, um, I'm going to just double this. So let's just create three cards. So we're going to do this one. Uh, 1.33. The same 1.33 is what we're going to leave it on. But as for the weight, we want to change the weight to two. 0.3. Let's see what 2.3 is going to give to us. Let's make it 2.6. So it's going to be 2.6. So it's actually increased a bit. So now we just have to change the color we have right on this. I want to change the color to white, just like this. And I'm going to have this one right here. So I have to duplicate this into two right now. I'm going to bring it down here. So the last one. So don't bother about how it looks right away. Just make sure you push it inside a little bit and actually make sure you actually select the both three of them. Then you go to a line and you want to actually distribute horizontally. And you can just come here and distribute vertically. And let's see what we have. Something very perfect. Dice better. <laughs> So you have equal alignment between them. So I'm not on yet. I can actually select the three of them. And uh, right here, I'm going to go to this particular effect shadow. And I just have to select how I want it to go. So I want to see something like that looks just like this. So which is cool. This is something I really want to use. So now that we are done doing this, it is time for we to bring in what we have actually analyzed right here, how we can actually have it in. So let us get a text file. So you can pick up this text file right here. So inside the text file, I'm going to type in HR attrition dashboard. So HR attrition dashboard, I just have to go to the top level right here. I'm still going to use this particular card print. Uh, let me have it on 28. Yeah, this will be cool. And I'm going to select this call right here. Let's go with something like this. So right now we have um, some background that doesn't really make it to fit well. So I just have to come here and have it removed. Something like this will be very, very okay. So quickly, I just want to bring in this particular circle, you know, where I'm going to have some uh, an icon right in. So to drag the circle right now, if I just do this, I wouldn't have the perfect circle. So let's say if I bring in another circle right now, I'm going to hold my shift key and drag it just like this. You can see I have more perfect circle than what I have right here. So we don't need this. Can get it, you can get that off. So, we just want to have the circle right in here and uh, want to go ahead and change the circle to white. And quickly, I want to remove the outline as well, so we don't need that. So, I can just duplicate this. So, on that is, I just have to write a footer title how employees left over organization so we can just go ahead and format this and make it a bit smaller so now let's go with 12 so go to home and uh, you put this right on 12 so cool 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 so you can just make it like this and now you can make this this way 
All right, we are now set to bring in the total employees we have right here. So what I'm going to do for the first time, I can just go to insert and from there, I can bring in my shape and uh, I can just, I'll bring in a text box here. So now when we did uh, the first formatting, we turn off the uh, formula bar. So we just have to go to view and turn back on from off to on. So now we have the formula bar. So we can just put our equal to right in here and go to analysis. Then we can click on this. So if you encounter any error while doing this, let's say you click on enter and you don't see anything right here. Or you maybe you have you know some settings to do, like if you've not used the pivot table to analyze anything like that before, you might not encounter something. So just make sure you click on pivot table and let's to solve the problem by going to uh, the pivot table and the lies here so on that particular part what you're going to see is an option so as you can see we have option here which is on that pivot table and the lies right here so make sure you come to this particular part and just take it off from our uh, generate get pivot table so this way you have to do your settings and that is all it's going to actually uh you're going to have the same result as i just have right now so here we go so we have our first, you know, uh, number right in here. So it is time for it to just make a little formatting to make sure we have what we want. So we are living it on a text format. We have the font type we have right on it. So we're going to change this one to 40. And uh, when we do that, so step back in, step out and step back in and redo it again. So we have to go ahead and change it to 40. So we just have to open it up. So we come right here and make sure we centralize it. So 40 is actually cool. We remove the border and the, and the outline, uh, the fill on the outline from it. So the color is not really cool to me. I just want to make sure I go ahead and change the color to this particular color to look just like this color we have right here. So I think this is okay. So we just have to make sure we do the formatting right here for we to have comma separator so we just want to go with number and take off the decimal places and here you go so when we go back here right now we have something like this so i can decide to bring this just ctrl d to double to double it so from here i'm gonna just type in total employees right so we just resize it so we can move it down so moving it down right now we can see it better so we just want to go right here and make sure we change the color to something like this and we want to change this one to 14 that pops it out very much so we just have to align it properly and stuff like that so now we have what we want so it is time for we to actually bring in the you know something that just adds some feel to it that doesn't really make this place look empty so we're gonna go get it right now and what we have right here as well that looks some kind of animated like i'm talking about this if you look at this right now is what we have right here so you can see it. so it makes a dashboard to have, to have a life so we go ahead and bring it in so the first place we need to visit is actually in this particular part here on this icon part right here so this is where you need to come. So when you come to this I uh this to this part here, uh, this icon part is called flaticon.com. So flaticon.com. That is the name of the website. So make sure you visit this website and try as much as you could to come and change it from icon sticker or interface icon to just animated icon and uh, after you might have done that you just have to use the right search for to get what you want let us say we are going to look for circle and if i hit my enter key right now let's see what we have so now we have those two circles right here so this is where i got the first one from as you can see it's actually played out so i can just click on it and you're gonna have it so you have some other ones you can play around with if you want to use something like this 
if you want to use like flag you know like something like this so this one looks like somebody inside the circle that was why i loved it so seriously so i just want to go with this one so what i'm going to do right now is just to click on download and uh, if you're trying to use this particular website for the first couple of times you don't need to sign up but after some time it's going to ask you to sign up before you can keep using the website to get some kind of free uh g free icons and stuff like that so you can do that it doesn't cost a thing so you don't have to put in your credit card to do that so here it says get premium but that is not the case you can do it for free so we are doing this for free right now you can do the same thing for free so you can just go to gif right here so give it some time it's downloading it will definitely start to download in the GFE. So the download has been completed. The ice all you need to do. So we go back to this place here, click right here. And what we need to do right now is to get in the image. There is no true way to do this. Just the same way you bring in the my image is what you're gonna do. Just go to insert and the next thing go to illustrations. It depends on the version of um pop um, of um of the Excel you're using. So I'm going to go to pictures and I'm going to say from this device. So the next thing I do is to navigate to where I have it right in. So it's under download if I click on it. So here we go. We have it right here. And if I double click and uh, this is what we have. So here we go. So I can resize it and resize it to my satisfaction. So remember you can pause it and turn it to a static image. It's your choice, but I just want to play it. And I'm going to take it and have it right in here. So again, it's decided to make it a bit smaller. So it's my choice, whatever I want, I do to it. That is what I've done. And um, I have it right for you. Um, um, I've already gotten it downloaded. So if I want to pick the second one right now, I can go right here and go to illustrations, go to this particular picture, this device, and I can navigate to where I have it right in. So we just go right here and I'm going to go and click on HR. So animated images. So here we have different type of them. So this is what we're going to use next. I'm going to just go ahead and click on insert. So I just have to make it smaller. So I can just go right here and put it in the middle of this. Just make it a bit, just try as much as you could to touch it. So make sure it's actually in the middle of it. So you can see how I've gotten this done. So it's not magic. But this is what you need to do. So already we are coming close to what we have right here. So now we go back to analysis. So from there, we're going to create chat with this. Remember the chat we're going to be creating will not actually, you know, pick from here. So it's only going to feed from this, not from here. So this one is just created for we to use it to identify, which is, you know, current employees and, you know, ex employees, whatever. So clicking on this part right now, you don't need to highlight it. You can just go to the top level right here. You click on insert and the kind of chat we want to create is this particular, you know, do not chat right here. Beautiful. So I want to take care of everything off. I just want to go ahead and head and have it hidden. So we don't want the legend to show as well. We're going to take this off and that is the one chat we want to create from this and have it duplicated into two. Let me show you how I did it. So I'm going to have to paste it in here. So why is it not pasting? Okay, nicely done. So we've pasted this right here. You can decide to remove anything that has to do with border and fill color and make it as small as I want. So it's your choice. Just make it how you really want it to go. So you can just make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to fit it in right here. I think this is cool. I love it this way. So the next thing I do now is just for me to remove the outline from here as well. So now I can just go ahead and control D to double this and uh, try to bring this right in here. Right. So the same chart doubled into two. So let's see how we can make sense with this. 
So the first thing you do is to click on this and I'm going to just double click on this part here on this particular color. So once what you've done is actually effective, so you're going to see the color appeared right here. If I click on this particular part right now, you can see the color has changed. So I'm going to click right here to activate the color. And I just want to change this particular part of it to a different color. So we are going to introduce another color right now. And the color is this right here. So this is the color code for red, for green, and for blue. Or you can actually use the hex code to get the same color we have right on our screen. So hitting on enter, we've just gotten changed. And the next part we're going to change right now is this particular part right here. So we just want to make sure when we decide to make a change to that color, we want to actually try as much as we could to remember the color we're going to use. So let us go with this color. I think it's too dark, so we can go with something lighter. This one right here. Oh, better. So now, once we've gotten that color, so the next thing we're going to do is just for it to come to this particular part here. Now, we use the same color for this part. So click right here and come right here and change the color of this. Do you see what I've done now? So instead of me to create, you know, separate chart, I just created one chart and I some kind of decide to change uh, this and get what we want. So this is exactly what you need to do. There is no magic on this. So we change the color to this one here, which is this very one. So make sure you have the color appeared in this box before you decide to make any changes. So we're going to bring in another color. So we want to make sure we make the color too much and have an enhanced correlation, wherever it is. So now can you see it's on your color? I'm going to change it to this particular color right here. So this is how we have achieved this particular kind of chart of a team. So now for you to know which one is this right now, if I hover over here, this is my attrition ex-employees. And it's my current employees, how many employees I have currently in my organization. So those are not the, those, this particular number here doesn't depict the number of employees we have in our organization currently. But this actually tells how many employees we've actually gotten over time. You get it? So that is exactly what it is. So it is time for us to go back in. So to do that, I'm going to double this right here. I'm going to have it right here and go ahead and bring in the percentage that is peculiar to this. So it's going to be 17%. So we can make it as small as we want to make sure it fits in into this particular part here. So we double it and have it for this particular part. So it is, if it's on 10, I think the other one is going to be on 9. Just change that part right there and we have it. So all you need to change is just change uh, the row where it's sitting on the, you know, on the column H, that is all, it's going to give you this. So it's time for we to format this to make it look lively on it. So we're going to select both of them. I think we can do them at once. So I'm going to go right here, go to home, and let's just put it on 18 and see. So 18 is fine. So 18 is fine. So we can decide to select a particular color like this color for it. It looks a little bit calm. So we don't need to board it. We can just leave it that way. I think this is the first thing we need to do. So now we need to add some text to tell what it is that we have right here. That is better. So we don't need to create something new. We just want to go ahead and just duplicate this. I want to have this right here. So I'm going to take it up a little bit. So I can just have it double again and bring it all the way down a bit. So if I want to have equal, uh, size where it sits i just have to go to shape and i'm gonna go to align and i just want to align this button and that is exactly what it is so now we just have to make sure we hold the control key we're gonna have this plus sign i'm gonna drag it down once i have the plus sign. that's what i'm gonna do so just drag it down a bit so something like this so here i'm gonna type in attrition and I have to align this to the, um, I'm going to go to my home here. So we're going to put this on 12. So yeah, just want to move it this way. So it is time for me to just play around with this. And now we can just reduce this. 
uh, can give the symptom rights for this. So, right for this, I'm just wanna I just wanna go ahead and remove the total away from it. So for this one here, I wanna turn this one into active. So interactive, so which means we have to just align it again. Nicely done. For the active part here, all I'm gonna do now is just to so make sure I use the same color. So for the employee's attrition, so I think I can put red here. So red here, So maybe for my attrition rate, I can just go right here and uh, I'm gonna have the color change to this particular color right here. So can you see what it is right now? So this is exactly what we want. So we're not yet, we're not yet done. So I can just make sure I just move those right to this particular part so we can actually readjust it later. So I wanna bring the number that is peculiar to this particular one here. So we go back here and now here is our ex employee and uh, we're going to go back and just bring that in again our current employees to so here is the value for our current employee uh, i want to go back here and make sure i just select it control one then from there i'm going to go to number i just want to take off the extra decimal and surely put separator all right, if we go back right now, we should have some tender looks just like this, but we're not really done yet. So we just have to give it nice format and that's gonna make it just stand out. So let's just go back to the top ribbon. I wanna go with 24, I just have to select 24. And I'm gonna go with um, the text type here. So I can decide to use something like this. So for 24, we are cool with this because I'm 24 and this text here is not really much. So we are cool with that. So on this one here, we have to actually stretch it to make sure it shows all our text. So I can decide to make sure it looks just like this. And we can just bring this right here, whatever we need to do. Um, to make some adjustments right now, I just want to select both this and this. And uh, we're gonna just bring it this way. Nicely done. So we just have to do the same thing to this particular part as well. Now we're going to double this card we have right here. So I'm gonna double it. And the first time I just wanna go ahead and control one to bring this up. So for this particular you know, effect we have and I wanna have it removed so we don't have it any longer. So we just want to go ahead and change the color to it as well. We don't want to use this color we have right here. Uh, but before then, let's see what we're going to do for the size. So we don't want to keep the same size. For it to be on the same page, let us just go to shape format. And for the height, we want to make the height to be 1.0, uh, 1.05. And for the weight, we want to make the weight to be 1.76. So 7.6 here. So let's go back. So we're gonna have something like this. So now I can choose the right color for it. So I wanna go right here. So let me go with this color. Beautiful. I have this color. I can bring it right here and just create space between this part right here. So we need that space is very important. So I wanna double this. I'm gonna bring it all the way down. So I can select the color I want to use for it. Let's go with this color. So the next one is going to be this one here. And I want to select this particular color for it. So scroll it down. So on this one now, I just want to make sure I put it up. So nicely done. So if the coveness is too much, uh, I just want to reduce the coveness a bit. To this one right here. So I think we are actually done with the card we want to create. So we're going to fill this card right now with something. 
awesome notes is very important so let's just go back to our transform data here on the transform data if i scroll to this end uh if you still remember we bought some kind of create had those columns or self using power query if you've not watched that you just have to go right and watch that for you not to like how did you do this maybe you did it behind the scene no i'm making everything right before your eyes so now we have this part here where we have high and low for performance status like that is the employee performance so do we have high attrition under high performance or do we have low attrition or high attrition under low performance right here so which one so that is what we're going to analyze right now i just want to come right here and uh this time around what i'm going to do is just for me to go to my top ribbon so go to view and make sure you turn off the uh grid line so we don't want a grid line but what we need to do now is just to make sure we create a demarcation between those two um, I'm going to go here, sorry, under this, I just want to go and see border left. Oh, should I use right? Okay, let me use border right. So now it's going to create this border for me. And I'm going to do the same thing to this part right here as well. So just click on it. You don't need to select the right again. So it has been done for me. Right. So all I need to do is just to make sure I just control C to copy this and I'm going to control V to paste this right in here. You get it? So we paste this right in here. So once we have this pasted, what we're going to do right now is just to make sure we bring in the right dimension we're going to use to actually break this down. Right. So right click and go to this particular field list. And the first we're going to get right now is to make sure we bring in our attrition to the filter level. And now we just have to go right and bring the performance status right to the raw level. So we have both high and low. So for now, it's showing us the total employees. That is not what we want to see. What we really want to see is just where we have attrition under years. And I'm going to click on. OK, can you see it right now? So why did I use years? Let me show you why I did use years. So just like as I have explained before now, when we use years, we're actually saying, okay, we want just for X employees, the employees that we don't have more existing in the organization. So when we decide to use no, we're trying to use the current employees and just know that we are not analyzing to get more information about the current employees living with us. Instead, we are trying to know much more about the ex-employees, how many left us in this organization, that department, you know, are they happy? Are they, was it because they are happy or they are not happy? You know, all that. That is what we just want to know, right? So let's get back. So this is ready. Uh, all we have to do now is just to make sure we still have to, you know, just set it on its own bridge whatever so going back right to right now i just want to just go ahead and just double this i'm going to take it up to this level here so we need to change the color to match what we want let's go with something like this so i'm going to go with something like this so double it and for this one here we're going to change the color to something a bit darker and you want to turn it to 11. so here you just want to type oh sorry we selected everything so we want to type in here by high performance So by high performer, so we can just move it a bit. So right now, I uh, can just go ahead and drag this right in here. So so I want to just make sure I move it, and it's gonna start from this side here, something like this. So the same thing I've done is what I'm going to do to the next one here. Just make sure you select them both and drag it to this end here. I think we are cool with this. So here is going to be by low. Instead of high, we're going to put low here. 
so by low performer so that is better so we just have to bring in the values that is peculiar to each one of them so i can just get this so we've selected both of them so get this right here so we can see it now so it doesn't really matter so you just want to go ahead and bring the high performance so for high we have this value so it is time for we to change the value to what we want but before then we're going to duplicate it so remember if we have it sitting okay let me show you what i've done so for you to get it right here so now if we actually picked from here it's a row this is under row right here so if we pick from here the row number is actually nine which means we're going to get from row 10 and the column where we are on right now is actually column l row 10 that we're going to get something from so coming here now you just have to change this nine to ten so you don't have to go all the way back right there so that that is all you need to do so the next thing i'm going to go ahead and give it the same formatting so we can't say it i just have to go ahead and change it to what will pop so we do the same thing to this part as well so now we can just decide to just keep it the way it should be that would make a lot of sense so now we have something like this i don't always love having some kind of empty space i just want to use one or two ways to make sure i cover it up so how am i going to do this right now so which means we'll have to go to the top ribbon here so make sure you are connected to your wi-fi or you can connect using your phone right now i'm using techno commons 17 pro uh, to connect to my system so you can use any wi-fi at all you have access to so go to insert and from insert you go to illustrations and from there you go to this icon go to icons so just wait for it it's coming up it depends on the speed of your computer or of your you know wi-fi whatever so now here we have it so we have some icons here we might have different icon because if you're not using the same version i'm using you will definitely don't have the same icons like i do but definitely you're gonna have this icon i'm looking for to see so let's just search for people so on the people i can scroll down to look for the icon okay i think i've seen it i'm looking for something like this can you see it so i can just decide to delete and that will bring the whole of it that we have right here which you can actually scan through to get more icons from whatever you want to get so but you can actually see them more based on category you can see different ones right here but it's the one that we need so we just want to go with this one here so here we have it so we can just make sure we make it a bit smaller i'm gonna put this one right in here so you can make it small little just have it right here so i'm gonna double it and i'm gonna have this one right here for the color i'm not cool with it so i can control one to go ahead and change the color to it so i want to use the color right for this maybe it's too so this color is cool so for this particular color right here we just want to use calm white color that looks just like this so now we've just make sure we don't have something very too like ordinary so too much space is gonna be bad so something like this is better so i selected them both to actually change the color to make sure it looks some kind of sharp so this is more you know brighter so after that i just for the numbers people will not still know what number is it about i don't want to keep anybody in doubt like what the heck is it doing so we just want to put in here our employees so i'm gonna make it this way so you can make it a bit smaller so nicely done so we can just double this and have it right here so now it's somehow much more readable so you can see total employees by high performance 
410 employers, employees, sorry. Uh, total employees by low performance, 79 employees. So what about this? So always try as much as you could to save your work because you might lose it if you don't do that. 